Uh, now to talk about uh, this address of our Prime Minister that is very important uh, in this whole regional and national and international co uh, context. We've been joined by Raza Khan, our uh, senior correspondent. Uh, Raza, thank you very much to have uh, joined us for this transmission. Raza, uh, how important are the points that the Prime Minister talked about during the course of his speech, whether it be COVID-19, whether it be uh, Islamophobia, whether it be uh, uh, Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, whether it be the Palestine issue, whether it be the Afghan peace process. And climate change and, for that. And climate change, exactly. Well, you know, uh, I mean, let me uh, take you back to last year. You and I uh, were doing a similar kind of uh, uh, a program after exactly. the Prime Minister Imran Khan's speech uh, to the UN General Assembly last mm -hmm. year. And I think uh, we agreed on one point, and that was uh, he spoke from his heart. And mm -hmm. I think I can say the same thing this year as well, despite it being a recorded speech last year. Uh, he was physically present uh, within the General Assembly, uh, uh, you know, UN uh, building. But I think uh, the areas that he has touched, I mean, it is absolutely amazing. Uh, we have gone through a lot of leader speeches in, uh, uh, you know, uh, leading up to this uh, speech by our Prime Minister. But I don't think that any other uh, uh, world leader, of, uh, and especially a, a Muslim country's leader, has talked about Palestine, talked about Kashmir, Islamophobia, respect for uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and uh, uh, he condemned the republication of Charlie Hebdo uh, cartoons in, uh, uh, in France, mm -hmm. and the burning of Quran, of course, uh, the nefarious act in Norway. So he has uh, touched on very uh, sensitive uh, themes, which are very sensitive True. and very dear to the Muslim community the world over. And he has also talked about money laundering. We all know that uh, countries like Pakistan are uh, uh, being uh, uh, asked to do more again and again in uh, uh, various uh, respects by the developed countries or the Western countries for that matter, whereas they don't realize that these Cayman Islands, these British Virgin Islands and Isle of Man, Isle of White kind of uh, uh, territories which have become hotbed of uh, looted money, illicit money from the developing uh, world. Uh, they have uh, taken away the resources, the precious resources which are needed within countries like Pakistan. Uh, you know, and he is right. Uh, this is the second year he has spoken on this and he is absolutely right. This laundered money must be brought back to these developing countries like Pakistan. It, this wealth belongs to the people of these countries and these money launderers who usually get protection as Prime Minister pointed out because they have access to uh, rich lawyers and the western judicial system, the uh, judicial system of the developed world helps them. This is absolutely not on. I think he has spoken about that and he said that uh, don't talk about aid for the developing world because some of these western countries uh, as a matter of fact, even President Trump, uh, uh, before he became the president, used to lambast Pakistan for getting USA. He forgot the fact the uh, sacrifices Pakistan has made in the war against exactly. uh, uh, terrorism and the fact that uh, billions and billions of uh, uh, dollars is going out of the developed, uh, developing world to these uh, Isle of Man, Isle of Wight, British Virgin Island kind of uh, uh, offshore tax havens. So, and because the rich countries themselves benefit from such uh, activities, they don't stop it. And as a result, we have to go to IMF, World Bank, for poor peanuts like billion dollars, billion plus, whereas the looted uh, money is into trillions. Uh, uh, Rakhun, before you actually move on to any other point, actually, uh, let's talk uh, even more about money laundering. Now, here's the thing. While, yes, we, of course, totally agree with all the nine points mentioned by the Premier yesterday as well, we want uh, the you know, richer countries to actually take into account whatever is happening to the poorer ones. But do you think the response of the uh, developed countries or the, richest, the richer countries is going to be as uh, you know, open and accepting towards these comments coming from Pakistan, first of all? Are they going to make any laws and legislations that will curb this menace of money laundering. Also, one more thing to add today, the President of Pakistan actually ratified the anti-money laundering bill and it's now a law, do you think? It has anything to do with the timing of, uh, you know, both of these things coming together. What do you think this has to say? Shiza, let me tell you something that uh, uh, you've raised the point, uh, you know, it's, it may be a drop in the ocean, this speech, but this is a, a point to which Umar and I agreed upon last year as well, yeah. that no other world leader from the third world has ever spoken on these lines. Of course. Yeah, I mean, I, I, we've been going through these uh, UN General Assembly speeches for year and year. Hmm. Uh, around year after year, we've gone through them. No one has directly looked into the eyes of these uh, Western world leaders and asked them to do something about this. Uh, because these uh, trillions of dollars are lying in your uh, offshore, uh, you know, these uh, tax havens, right. as I mentioned. 
and then you give a uh, uh, few million dollars of aid to countries like Pakistan, and then you, uh, you know, uh, behave arrogantly, and you look down upon these countries. So this mm. is not on. And uh, it may be difficult, uh, you know, but the fact is, uh, let's juxtapose that with what steps government of uh, Prime Minister Imran Khan has taken within Pakistan. Okay. You mentioned this uh, money laundering bill being passed. Well, it is related to the FATA, the Financial Action yes. Task Force, a task force which incidentally was set up to curb money laundering. Hmm. Whereas, uh, uh, you know, uh, Pakistan has taken this internal legislation, now it is up to the West, it is up to the richer countries, it is up to them, uh, you know, uh, that they take steps so that these money launderers who are sitting and taking, uh, you know, use of these uh, legal loopholes in their right. legal systems uh, to a, a, a return these money launderers to countries like Pakistan so that they face justice and B to return the wealth which belongs to the developing countries. And let me uh, also add here, Shazar, that uh, I was really touched. Uh, he has really turned out to be a true spokesman of the Kashmiri cause and uh, the way he has uh, eloquently uh, propagated the fact that Kashmiris are fighting for their uh, right of self-determination and the fact that RSS uh, you know, the, the mother body of uh, Prime Minister Modi hmm. uh, is, uh, an, uh, is basically, it took inspiration from the Nazis in the 1920s hmm. and uh, this uh, 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 lynching uh, campaign against the Muslims and other minorities which goes on in India day in day out, these cow vigilantes he talked about, Muslims are the number one target but then of course Christians as well. So, and now, uh, you, you, are, you and I know that few meters from, uh, away from where we are sitting in PTV, mm -hmm. on Constitution Avenue, thousands of Hindus are sitting because in Jodhpur, 11 Pakistani Hindus were massacred. Mm -hmm. And India is not cooperating with exactly. the law enforcement in August agency. This year. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, in, on August the 9th, mm -hmm. this very year. So the fact is that India has become uh, 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 an evil uh, country, an evil empire, so to say, and it is led by... Uh, a person who was a chief minister when the Gujarat tragedy, the Gujarat massacre took place in 2002 and this was also mentioned by Prime Minister and uh, the Samjota Express tragedy took place mm. in 2007. So the fact is there's a long list uh, of uh, and Babri Masjid's demolition as well. So the fact is we are talking about a country which is hell-bent on squeezing its neighbor, that's another mm. thing, mm. but now that China has brought in its army, the PLA, the famous uh, People's Liberation Army, that uh, finally India has got somebody, it's, its own size, who is uh, finally giving a shut-up call to India, otherwise for smaller neighbors, all of the smaller neighbors. Sorry, no, I'm cutting you short. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you talked about something that I think all of us agree on, that Imran Khan is in essence a true world leader. Now you talked about also another point that we haven't talked about as yet, and that is debt relief. In April hmm. this year, Imran Khan also mentioned and uh, urged the world community to engage in debt relief, especially the G20 countries and all the other important organizations as well. And of course, there was a response, but the response has not been enough. Do you feel this, uh, this part of his speech when he talked about debt relief and that the world needs to do more was also very important in this current context, especially in the context of a pandemic that has engulfed the entire world? You're absolutely right, Omar. The fact is, as I pointed out, Western world, especially the developed world, is, uh, you can call it hypocrite, because it has double standards. You know, on one hand, it talks about human rights and whatnot, whereas it doesn't do anything about debt relief. Mm -hmm. You know, these billions and billions of dollars of debt, which were accumulated by corrupt regimes of the past. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, if uh, uh, the previous regimes were corrupt here in our country, you know, what is the fault of the current government? Why? But just because the current financial structure in the world is such that you somehow have to pay these debts, you know, so uh, if you do that, you are left with few, uh, you know, a, a very m a minuscule amount mm. to spend on education and health because yeah. most of the money of the budget goes into debt services. But you know, Raza, also economy has uh, been badly affected due to this pandemic, so the debt relief even becomes even more difficult for the developing nations. That's mm. right, Omar, and that's why I would link it with the, his initiative on uh, calling on the West to do something, the development regarding mm. the money laundering. These mm. two, two things are interlinked. Rich world, he talked about, has spent... Ten trillion dollars for its citizens mm. uh, because of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, mm. Mm. Uh, uh, the fiscal stimuluses and whatnot. Mm. Whereas 2.5 trillion dollars are estimated to be needed by all the developing countries. Mm. So he's openly talking about that. You know, you ask us 
uh, developing countries to do more in various respects. It is time for the West, it is time for the developed world to do more and give debt, debt relief, to send the money launderers back to uh, countries like Pakistan so that they face the justice to prevent the legal loopholes in their countries. Mm -hmm. And one more thing, you talked about the Quran piece that is very important. Pakistan, uh, as the world acknowledges, even the US uh, has reluctantly, openly started acknowledging uh, okay. the statements of uh, Mr. Pompeo and mm -hmm. Zalme Khalilzad and others, mm -hmm. that Pakistan has... And also, where has has played played the ambassador designate to Pakistan who's talked in yeah, the Senate pa confirmation... Pakistan community. has played a key role, Omar, mm -hmm. in finally bringing the Taliban on... Uh, across the table first with the Americans and now the Taliban in Qatar are talking to the other Afghans, mm -hmm. you know, the current government of Afghanistan. So this intra-Afghan talks are going on. He is one political leader in Pakistan. Omar, you go, you, you, your association with news media goes back to 1999-2000. You remember that Imran Khan, even from 2001, September 11 onwards, was the only leader who said there is no military solution uh, mm -hmm. to this so-called war on terror and this war. Afghanistan uh, will never be pacified. Uh, and 19 years later, we see the street by Mr. Pompeo standing with Mullah Barada of Taliban. So you can well imagine that who a was... Would who was a, a, think a, a picture would be possible a thousand words. words. Yeah. So here's the thing, you know, uh, Raza Khan, when we talk about something uh, such as regionalism, the concept or the theory of regionalism is relatively new as compared to, of course, the other international relations theories. But the scholars of regionalism dream of seeing or looking for a regional institution or organization in South Asia because everyone knows of the huge potential of regional cooperation over here. But it is being hindered and restricted because of, like we already spoke about, our hostile neighbor, someone who has a neo-colonial or, or an imperial mindset. So with the existence of such a neighbor within this region, are we ever going to realize the dream of a, a well, perfectly operational regional institution? Uh, Shaza, uh, I agree with your premise, but the fact is in the time uh, this uh, uh, elephant in the room, that is India, uh, yes. learns to behave and uh, it doesn't act like a wild elephant which tramples upon the rights of its neighbors like Pakistan which carries out systematic massacre of people mm. uh, not only within India uh, but also you know especially regions like uh, Kashmir uh, the in illegal uh, Indian occupied uh, uh, Kashmir you know and uh, day in day out you see these horrifying pictures of uh, blinded Kashmiris you know because of pallet guns and what not these uh, extra judicial encounters over there but let me tell you that there is a silver lining, this uh, Chinese challenge, hmm. uh, this People's Liberation Army is sitting uh, right across the LSE. All right, now coming back to our uh, senior political analyst over here in the studios, Raza Khan. Uh, before that, actually, I want to say one thing. We kept referring to Pakistan as a third world country over here. I don't really like this term, and I'll tell you why. Because it's calling Pakistan a third world country really means we're calling it post-colonial, which is. And while it is post-colonial, it was and it has been ripped off its asset always. Mm. And then, I mean, who is it that is going to call the center the center and the periphery the periphery? It is the superpowers itself, right? Right, who are oh, still, I agree with you. Yeah, completely. which, you know, who are still creating this narrative, but now moving on to you, Raza Khan. Sorry I took that long. But climate change is one of the very important topics that our Premier likes to talk about. In fact, he realizes that uh, Pakistan happens to be in one of the top 10 countries which are badly hit by climate change. Last year, he said that about 80% of our water comes from our glaciers, and we really worry that they're melting. And even this year, he spoke about, you know, countries uh, actually adhering to the Paris Agreement. Mm -hmm. The Paris Agreement also said that 100 million dollars to be mobilized for climate change all around the globe through UN of course. Mm. How do you think that is going to make a change or is it actually or is it just words? The fact is that climate change affects Pakistan definitely and uh, you and I we all know that this is happening. Uh, the fact is that uh, Prime Minister Imran Khan has taken practical steps. Mm. Even uh, when BTI was just in government in Khaibar uh, Pakhtun uh, they launched this uh, billion tree uh, you know, uh, tree so campaign. Yes. Uh, mm. This campaign was... Uh, uh, and he talked about very, that during yes, the course of yes, his speech he, as well. In, in his speech as well, yes. Mm. Yes, Umar. So the fact is that if there is one person in Pakistan, one politician, one leader who has uh, taken it seriously, that is him. That mm. is Mr. Imran Khan. Yes. That he has launched this and every uh, second day we are covering a news event where he himself is uh, planting a sa sampling some, you know, sampling some, some place or yes. he is... Uh, 
you know, asking his ministers exactly. to go and, uh, you know, do so. So the fact is, climate change is uh, a, a reality, hmm. unlike what Mr. Trump thinks, and he, uh, it has become a joke for him, you know. But I think for him, ignorance is bliss. Yes, mm -hmm. he says, says something else, and Mr. Trump says something else. But the fact is that uh, uh, he has raised a very important point uh, that mm -hmm. the developing world will suffer because the carbon emissions, as you all know, he talked about that we have very minuscule uh, carbon emissions uh, as compared to the developed world. 0.2% so They are the main polluters of the world, yes, exactly. and they should take steps, and they should in fact give money. I mean, look at the fires around the world, exactly. look at the earthquakes, the exactly. floods, I mean, all that is happening around the world as well. I mean, that is the cause. Uh, the exactly. Uh, of Prime Minister talked about the fires in, uh, you know, California, Siberia, we all know what is, mm -hmm. what is happening. And they're affecting mm -hmm. uh, the globe, uh, you know. So the fact is that uh, this uh, clean and green uh, campaign in Pakistan, uh, you know, is a manifestation of that. And now uh, this uh, River Avi urban development project, you know, there will be uh, trees all across as, uh, exactly. that as well. Hmm. So I think climate change is, uh, was highlighted by Prime Minister Imran Khan. I mean, climate well. change among so many other important And multilateralism, let me point out that aspect, oh, yeah. that he talked about that this has to be. And Shiza, uh, before uh, uh, you were uh, speaking about regionalism, I think he talked about this, that multilateralism hmm. is the way forward. That was one of the first as points As Chinese about. President Xi Jinping also talked about that. He hmm. said unilateralism is not the way forward. Of course, true. Of course, so true. Uh, this is very important that uh, we should follow hmm. what President Xi Jinping said okay. Or Prime Minister Man Khan said, and I think they're on the same page in this. But I think uh, uh, in this case, Mr. Trump and a uh, few others, they talk about uh, their home first. Or well, I think what is very first. important in his whole context is how our Prime Minister Imran Khan talked about points that not only concern Pakistan and this region, but the entire world. Thank you very much, Raza Khan, to have joined us and to have been our regular support as you have been every year. And I hope that you'll continue to give us more details on all the important topics that engulf the regional and the, the national and international events.